for whatever reason and whether it be with everything that's going on with a pandemic or it has to it has to do with finances it's trouble in your marriage whatever it may be um, I just want to speak to that anxiety for a minute and just remind you that you know you're right now in this moment you're in the presence of the mind regulator that he doesn't just come in and, and leave you to worry. He doesn't, li- he doesn't leave you in a state of, you know, I don't know what's coming next and I just, I'm just so frantic about trying to figure out the next step. He just says, you know what, just be. Just come in to daddy's house, sit down, prop yeah. your feet up, yeah. relax. Take a minute, take a deep breath, and just let all of your worries, all of your cares begin to just wash away. Because the the blood of Jesus has the same power today that it did back then. It didn't stop with our grandparents. It didn't stop with our parents, but is now present in this time that scripture says he is the very present help in time of need. So right now in this moment, Father, I thank you that we get to come into this place and we get to just call on your name and know that you are just so close. Father, I thank you that each and every breath that we get to take serves as a reminder that you're not done with us yet have purpose for our lives, that you still have a reason for us being here, even though thoughts may come in and try to contradict that. Father, I thank you that you just come in with a big old heart and you say, there, there, I know it's tough, I know it's hard, but I've got you. Father, I thank you for you just being who you are ever-present, never-changing, consistent. We love you and we praise you for everything that goes on within these walls and outside of them. We pray that no one would leave here in the same condition that they came in, but they would leave renewed, changed, and that they would leave here with a peace and understanding that you are in control and that you do nothing without intention. We love you and we praise you and we give you all the glory in this place. In Jesus' name. I'll never be more loved than I am right now Wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I can do To let you down Doesn't take a trophy To make you proud I'll never be more loved Than I am right now Oh God, I I can hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. When we sing it together. You are a child. So clear what 
if he watches over every sparrow, every sparrow, how much more will he love you? How much more does he love you? How much more does he love you? How much more does he love you? Jesus, that you are enough for us. We're going to enter into a time of communion. Communion is an invitation for us to pause and remember what Jesus has done for us. An intentional moment for us to rest in his complete and finished work on the cross. So often it's easy for us to just go through the familiar motions with our hearts disengaged. But other times... Our hearts are disengaged because we are carrying a form of shame or condemnation. When Adam and Eve ate of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, scripture says their eyes were opened and they were afraid because they were naked. Goes on to say that they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, so they hid themselves. But God doesn't leave them in that state. He calls out to them and brings them out of hiding. He provides the first sacrifice and clothes them. Shame and condemnation like to keep us hidden, closed off, disengaged. But just like God didn't keep Adam and Eve in their shame, he doesn't keep us in ours either. Isaiah 53, 5 says, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, or in other words, our actions don't, that don't measure up to God's definition of perfection. The verse goes on to say that Jesus was crushed for our iniquities, or in other words, wrongs done to us. Shame and condemnation, whether it's a result of our own actions or actions done to us, cannot take root in our hearts, our minds, or our bodies. Jesus' body was broken for all of it. We can have peace knowing that he has removed it all. We are covered and clothed by Jesus' sacrifice. We're gonna take of the bread just a minute before we do that, I just wanna pray for everyone in this room, everyone who's watching online and listening. Father God, I thank you so much. God, thank you so much that shame and condemnation, they have no, no power, no place in our hearts, in our minds. God, I just pray for right now, everyone in this room, everyone who's watching, everyone who's listening. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you search our hearts, search our minds. If there's any trace that's weighing anybody down of shame, of condemnation, 
Holy Spirit, I just pray that you go into those innermost steps right now. We command it to go in the name of Jesus. It cannot have place in anyone's hearts, anyone's now. We break it off in the name of Jesus right now. We break it off and we thank you, Father, that you've given, you gave up yourself, God. Not only do we believe that, Jesus, but we receive. We receive your sacrifice. We receive your free gift to us. Thank you, God. We receive and we also remember. In Jesus' name. Just like we remember that Jesus has broken off all shame and condemnation, let's also remember that his blood heals us, is the payment for what shame and condemnation try to steal from us. Because it is the one and only perfect and complete payment, we take authority over shame and condemnation. We receive Jesus' payment on our behalf. We rest and his healing power and love. So Jesus, I thank you so much for your perfect blood that was shed on our behalf. Jesus, thank you that we are covered by your blood. Thank you that your blood has paid the price for everything. Thank you that we are healed by your blood, Jesus. Thank you that we can receive your love, Jesus, and rest in the power of your love and of your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we just stay in that moment? Come on, if you're comfortable, can you just stretch your hands towards heaven? Just close your eyes and just fix, fix your heart, fix your mind on Jesus. We just surrender to our Savior, to our Redeemer. Come on, just take a few minutes and enjoy his presence. Enjoy his goodness, his faithfulness to us. Oh, Jesus, where would we be without the gift of the cross? Oh, Jesus, who would we be without the gift of the cross? We just lift our eyes, we just lift our hands. We open our ears on our hearts to your presence, Jesus. Wonderful Savior, wonderful Redeemer. Jesus, we've searched all over and we found none that loves like you love, that gives like you give, Jesus. Who can we compare your goodness to, Lord? No one, David said, I've never seen the Son of Man forsaken the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. We don't have to beg anything from you, Jesus. We're sons and daughters in your family and we worship you for who you are, King Jesus. We worship you, King Jesus. Wonderful Savior, thank you for redeeming us. God, thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving us, Jesus. Oh God, there's no one like you. Oh, we worship you this morning, Jesus. Oh, we worship you this morning.
No mountain high, no valley low. The winds may come, the winds may blow. We will trust you. We will trust you. No mountain high, no valley low. The storm may rage, the winds may blow. We will trust you. We will trust you. No mountain high, no valley low. The storm may rage, the wind may blow. We will trust you. We will trust you. No mountain high, no valley low. The storm may rage, the wind may blow. We will trust you. So may rage, the wind may blow, but we will trust you. We will trust you. No mountain high, no valley low. The storm may rage, the wind may blow, but we will trust you. Yes, we will. We will trust you. No mountain, no mountain high, no valley low. The storm may rage, the wind may. Slip your hands towards heaven, all across this room. Just take a few moments. If God's been good to you in any way, just begin to tell him how good he is. Begin to lift him up, extol him with your voice. Come on, just worship him in this place. We can do all the things, but if we don't reach the heart of God, it doesn't really matter. Come on, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Oh, I'm a promise keeper. Oh, I'm a mighty deliverer. You've been faithful, Jesus. Oh, you've been faithful, Jesus. You never fail. You never
God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. God of my present, God of my future, you write my story, you hold it all together. God of my present.
I'm tired of living this way and I've heard that there is a man who's been healing people. And I've got to get to his feet. If I can only touch but the hem of his garment, that'll be enough. And you know what, in that moment that she finally made her way to Jesus and she touched the hem of his garment. Jesus' words were, you know, who has touched me? The disciples there were confused. They were like, what are you talking about? There's so many people around. You've been touched this entire time. He said, no, 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 no. I felt something leave from me. I felt a healing leave from me. I felt love leave from me. To meet somebody who touched me. And he saw the woman with, that had been suffering. And he said, made you whole. That's it. <laughs> Your act of coming up here was cool. But if you had come up here and just wanted to get a touch, just to be merely just in the presence, just to be a bystander, she wouldn't have gotten healed. But he said, your faith has made you whole. Because she, she decided that when she woke up that day, yeah. that when she touched him, things were going to change. Yeah. That when she got close enough to him, that when she got to be able to touch him, she wasn't going to let go until things changed. So right now in this, in this presence of God that is filling this place, I release the spirit of the woman with the issue of blood. Whatever you've got right now, be a pursue with everything that you've got. It doesn't matter if you're running screens, if you're on the cameras, if you're just here in the service. We can do without words for a little while. If you need to get on your face, find a place to do it. If you need to get somewhere by yourself where nobody can see you ugly cry, you go and do it. But right now in this place, the same healing that was available for her is available right now. Whether it be anxiety in your mind, depression in your mind,
to fight for me. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Oh, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Oh, heaven comes to fight for me. talking about how we praise God in all things. We give thanks in all things. In this, this song, in the middle of the storm, I'll sing a little louder. In this song, in the middle of a storm, in the middle of what's going on, in the middle of the crisis, where we hear God the loudest in the Bible, where you see in Job, where you see in the midst of our problems when Jesus moves the most in our defeat where we need to sing a little louder. Oh, that's where we need to praise Him. We need to thank Him. We need to thank for what's happening and thank for what's coming. We need to sing a little louder in those moments. Oh, my God. God, I thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for this worship. Thank you for this praise. Thank you, God, that we can be here today. God, I thank you for Fred. Thank you for what he's bringing today. I thank you while you put on his heart. God, I thank you for this series. I thank you for the need to breathe, Lord. And I thank you for what you've done. In your name, Jesus. Amen.
his side and his feet Cause he is alive Oh my God is big and strong Oh he's big and strong and mighty in battle Whoever you are this morning, I just want to encourage you that you can win. You can win. And the Father, if Jesus rose with all power, if he rose with all authority, that same power, that same authority, it lives on the inside of you this morning. No matter what you walked in with, no matter what you came in with, he's reminding you that he is alive in every situation, in every circumstance, no matter what your marriage looked like, no matter what your job or your finances look like, God is alive. All he wants is your five fish and two loaves of bread. All he wants is all that you have Because all you have is all you need All that God wants is your yes All he wants is your faith And he wants to prove to you That he is sustaining And that his word is sure And that is strong That's why we're repeating that He is alive Because no matter what we feel No matter what we think God, Abba Father, El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Yes, he's Jehovah Jireh. Yes, he provides, but he's El Shaddai. He's the God that's more. God, you're more than enough. Yes, you're alive, God. Oh, he is alive. in this moment just worship him come on in this moment just lift your hands lift your song respond to his glory respond to his beckoning this morning James says when we draw nigh unto God he'll draw nigh unto us we break our boxes open at your feet this morning Jesus we break our boxes open at your feet King Jesus we worship you Sweet Savior, mighty Redeemer. Oh, you're so holy, God. Oh, you're so holy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. For a moment, can we uh, just stretch our hands towards heaven? Just everybody close your eyes, by your heads. I'm sure God is in this moment. The presence of the Lord is here.
think sometimes we're so sometimes we're scared of the pauses in church we're scared to bring it down and just be in the moment Sometimes we get wrapped up in the business of it all. And we just go from one moment to the next, to the next, to the next. But sometimes God wants us just to pause for a minute. Yeah. The scripture talks about resting in his presence. Sometimes he just wants us just to pause. So can we do that for a moment? Can we just just pause for a moment? Just we don't I know I know y'all looking at the clock and if you're watching online you're looking at the clock, but I feel like God wants to do something in our hearts this moment and no matter how much we sing and how great of an atmosphere we create, none of that can work on your heart. Only God can. So I just, Lord, we invite you in. We invite you into our hearts. We invite you to work and move and do as you please. In the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. Say that with me. Say, Lord, we invite you in. Come on, just lay hands on your, on your heart and just, Lord, I invite you in. Give the Lord space to move. We, we love you so much. We thank you for the opportunity that we get to come to lift our hands in worship, to praise you. We don't take it lightly. We know it's not something that happens on the norm across the world. Sometimes, God, we can get wrapped up in our Western Christian uh, comforts forget that there are people who risk their lives to worship you every day. Let us not be those people, God. Let us appreciate this moment that we have. Let us appreciate this time that we have. Let us appreciate that we can gather together to lift you up, to talk about your goodness, to talk about your mercy and your grace. Never let us com com uh, become complacent and the idea that we have it all together. God, we need you more than ever. We know we're not perfect. <laughs> Even though we try to put on this perfect facade for the world, we know, we know we're not perfect. And I pray, God, that we rest in knowing that your grace and the work of the cross, all of that, has completed the work for us. And when you died on the cross, you said it is finished. And you presented us with an opportunity to walk in the righteousness that you've given us. And I thank you for it. And we love you for it. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Say it loud, in Jesus' name. Amen.